Hello everybody, welcome to the video lecture of week number 15. In today's video lecture we're going to be talking about a simple server-client connection and how to write a simple uh, client-server application. It's going to be very basic. Uh, secondly, we're going to be doing a multi-threaded uh, client-server application where server can accept many connections and we're going to try to send some uh, objects through uh, from and to the client and server and yeah that's it so we're going to be doing two things all right let's start with the first one with the simple client and simple server so i'm going to start with simple server inside i'm going to have a main method and inside we're going to create a server server socket object and we're going to call it server equals new server socket and inside we're, we need to write a port on which the server is going to listen let's just write 8888 so this constructor it throw, throws an IO exception so we either need to handle it or we need to declare it in the method header we're just going to declare it it's the easiest way to think it. so it's the, the lazy way to do it probably but not always and after we create the server uh, this, this server socket has a method called accept. This is a method that returns the socket. So basically, accept works just like scanners in scanners next int method. It just waits for incoming connection. It just listens. Right? So this accept method listens for incoming connections, and when this connection is established, it just creates this returns the socket object. It returns the reference to that connection. So. You can think of the socket as connections. So we're going to create this socket. Socket connection. Let's just say con server that accept. And if I write something here, let's say uh, connection established, we will not see this text unless we create the client application that connects to it because. This is like an infinite loop, right? Inside, inside it has something like an infinite loop which just waits. And let's just run it to see. And as you can see, we don't see any output here. Now let's create the simple client. So inside simple client, we're also going to have a main method. And this time we're just going to create the socket. Okay, so uh, socket, client socket equals new socket and uh, there are many constructors of a socket class we're going to be using uh, like this one where the first one is string uh, it's like the the IP address of the network <coughs> that this socket is connecting to localhost is just you can think of this as a local area network and here we're going to say to which port we're connecting so we're going to say 8888 so uh, the port of the client and server should match because like it's like a door right so server is waiting at this door and we need to go to the same door in order to connect to it this um, constructor also throws uh, an IO exception which is going to declare it here so after this line of code executes the connection is going to establish so I can't run the client now directly because there is no, nothing that's waiting at this port. We're just going to get uh, this connect exception. So if I have a server listening and then I run a client, everything is going to be smooth in both places. So you can see the output, like we can see as a connection established. So these lines of code are enough to just establish a connection. But uh, ideally you just want, you really want to send some information back and forth. So how do we send some information? So in order to send, send some information, actually let me just uh, right here connect it to a server. In order to send some information we need to get the streams of this connection, like the output stream and the input stream. Using those streams we will be, we'll be able to send uh, like information. So let's first get the input stream. I'm going to just get data input stream, input stream equals new data input stream con connection dot get input stream and data output stream output stream equals 
new data output stream dot loop data output stream. That's this is very very simple and basic. And let's copy this code and put it here. Now instead of con, I'm just going to write client socket because it's the uh, it's the the socket of interest. Now both of them have uh, like input streams and output streams, and using these streams we can now send information back and forth. So let's say uh, when uh, the client is connected to the server, uh, it's going to send some data to it. Well, let's just send some number, and the the server is going to reply by by just making it a square. Okay? So we're going to say double num equals let's say uh, three, and then we're going to say output stream dot write double uh, num. And this is how we send information to the server. Now server needs to wait for this number because there is something like a protocol between them. So but when you write this like using this framework, uh, server socket and sockets, when you write your like network application, you just need to think of the uh, the, the protocol, uh, like who is going to write which message when, uh, like some rules, right? So first of all, client sends a number. That's why server needs to get it. That's why we just say double num from client equals input stream, right? Like a read double. And then when like when we send the double in client, like the server is going to receive it here. Read double is also has something like an infinite loop. Uh, it just waits for the the input stream to get to have some double value, and when there is some double value to read, it's gonna read it and return it. <coughs> when we read it, we are gonna just raise it to the to the square. We're gonna see num from client multiply equals num from client. This is how we square it, and then we send this information to the client. How do we send? Using using the output stream. We're gonna say output stream that write double now from client and now when the client sent its number it's waiting for the server to make it a square and then it just gets it right so system on we can just directly print it input stream dot rate double that's it so this is a very simple there is only one piece of information sent from client and one piece of information sent from the server let's let's start the server so server now is waiting for incoming connections. Actually, we can write here waiting for incoming connections. Let's start again. So it's waiting for incoming connection. Uh, we're going to run the client. So it's going to connect to server. You can see it. connection established, and all of the all of the stuff is instantly it just happened and this completes our uh, like tutorial maybe uh, the lecture about the simple client server connection of course it has uh, one very big drawback uh, like it's very hard to notice the the network part when you run the client and the server on the same computer uh, but if you have like two computers at home you can, you can, and both of them are connected to the same network. Let's say your home Wi-Fi network. You can run your server on one laptop, and you can run the client on the other laptop, and you're going to see that this really works. And these three is sent through sent through your Wi-Fi network to the server computer, and server is doing some calculations and giving back the result to the client over the Wi-Fi network, and then the client gets it and prints the result. And believe me, it's uh, really fun when you can connect uh, physically separate computers to each other. Okay, now let's go and talk about multi-threaded uh, uh, multi -threaded server. So now, currently, our server can accept only one client. It's just one client working, and it's not very interesting. Uh, and like, you can't make 
very large scale programs maybe using this approach. That's why you want many connections to uh, to like to happen, right? So each connection is going to work in its own way. And let's say you have 100 connections, and how are you going to deal all those 100 connections? You can't do them using this serial approach. Like, we can't just like server accept here and then server accept like after this one because uh, in reality it's just uh, working with each connection like one by one. Yeah. So you finish working with the first one and you accept the next one like one after another. Uh, which is serial approach. Why don't do it in multi, uh, like parallel approach? Each connection is going to be in a separate thread, work on it, working on its own. Server is working in one thread, and each like connection, uh, client connection is in separate threads. So this is an example of multi-threaded uh, server. So we're going to write a class multi-threaded server, and as always, it's going to be a main method here. So uh, I'm just going to copy some of the code from here. Let's just copy this one. And uh, let's copy this piece of code. So let's say throws IO exception. And uh, we're going to wait for incoming connections not only once, but infinitely many times. That's why we need to put it into a while loop. We're going to say while true and I put this there. And one thing I forgot to tell you is that uh, this was very rough, okay? Don't take it as an ideal way to write uh, client-server applications because like we didn't close the streams, uh, we didn't close the, like, the sockets, many things, many details are dismissed. Uh, you can just use it as a general guideline. The same is gonna go here in multi-threaded server. I'm just going to try to keep it simple. So it's going to wait for incoming connection and when the connection uh, is established it needs to go into its own thread. Right? So here we need to start a thread at this point and, and just leave it to the ocean of like, uh, like to, the, to its own uh, place where it can work by itself. So we're going to create, create a class and call it, let's say, client runnable. It's going to implement the runnable interface. This is usually how we uh, start when we write these uh, multi thread programs. Let's implement its run method. So this client runnable is going to have this socket, right? Private uh, socket, uh, client socket. S and then we're going to have a constructor. Uh, alt insert and then go to constructor using this. So we have our client socket. What do we do inside the run method? So we're going to get all these uh, data, input streams and output streams. Here we're going to say client socket. We're going to get the input streams and output streams. All of them are like throwing I, uh, IO exception, I guess. Yes, IO exception. That's why we're going to put them into try catch block. Let me the right click show context, context actions surround with try catch and also for this one as well and connection established we're going to write it here connection established instead we can write one client one connection uh, client connected and then what do we do we start or we create an instance of this client runnable we're going to say client runnable, uh, client runnable equals new client runnable, and we're going to send connection there, and then we're going to say thread thread equals new thread client runnable, and then thread dot start. This is how we usually uh, start like the threads, and when this thread is started, it's going to start working separately on this on the run method, and this part of code is going to be independent of it. So it's still going to wait for incoming connections. So this is like the general structure of multi-threaded server. <clears throat> now we're going to focus on here. So we need to like decide what this program is going to do. Let's do the same thing. 
like uh, here we're like sending number and server is replying with the square of the number let's do the same thing so I'm gonna create a new Java class uh, let's just uh, write as multi-threaded client it's actually not multi-threaded uh, let's just say this client okay and here I'm gonna create a package new package and call it simple and put this simple client and simple server into this package and one more package multi-threaded and put this client and multi-threaded server into there okay now we can continue our work so the client actually is going to have the same kind of code so we're going to copy it and paste it like this and like declare this exception so we're gonna go to the same uh, like port connected to a server we're gonna get the streams and then let's create actually a scanner so we can read from a console scanner in equals new scanner uh, system in And uh, what we're gonna do, we're gonna say double num equals in dot next uh, double, and here we're gonna say system print and enter a double value. Now let's not make it a len, but just print. And then we're gonna write this double, and then we're gonna read read the double. And sometimes it's a good practice to flush uh, to make sure that the data is actually sent, and not that actually not send only one number but let's send many many numbers so we're gonna put it into a loop okay so we're gonna say while uh, true and then take this code and put it in into while true so we need to have some way to stop this loop let's just say uh, some double value to stop the loop some secret number let's just say say 3.14 to stop okay and when we read this double we're just gonna say if this number equals 3.14 then we just break out of the loop this is actually not not good because the client is gonna stop working and since like the multi-threaded server is still having the connection of this client it's gonna have some exception thrown up uh, let's just not bother about it we're just gonna stop it we're focusing on the communication between the server and the client. So we're going to write the number, flush it, and then read the number. And actually, let's just write the. Uh, let's just say uh, reply from server, from the server. And we're going to say plus this number input stream that read double and it's gonna happen indefinitely and in multi-threaded server what we're gonna do uh, is we establish the connection and since the client is kind of like sending the numbers like many many times we also need to have a loop here uh, which is while true inside while true we're gonna get the the client's number the actually code is here let me just copy it Okay, that's it. So this should actually work. Let's start our server, multi-threaded server. So you can see down below, it's waiting for incoming connections. Now let's start one client connected to a server. Okay, it's like client connected. Multi-threaded.client. Why is this being printed? Interesting. Client connect. Where am I printing this? Oh, yeah, here. Okay, let's keep it that way. Let's just run one more client. Client is not allowed to run in parallel. Hmm, interesting. So, um, let me actually start it with. Uh, with the terminal. 
Alright, so I opened my terminal, I copied all the Java files into this folder. Now let's me, let me compile it. Javac multi-threaded server Java and start it. Waiting for incoming connection. So let's compile uh, client Java and start it. So you can directly see that uh, the client is connected. Let's just start one more client. And we have one more client connected. Let me write some number one. The square is one, two, and all of these things are happening uh, at the same time. So the server is like dealing with this, uh, both of the clients simultaneously. Okay, now, um, how do we send? Uh, so sending primitive data types is, uh, is simple. You do it with this data output stream and data input stream. And uh, in the beginning of the video lecture, I uh, I, I said that we're going to be sending some objects uh, through the network. Let's do that. So we're going to create a new class. Let's uh, let's say that this class is a um, custom number. Okay, a custom number. Uh, and we're going to say implement serializable. It's just going to be a wrapper class, all right? So it's just going to have private double number, and we're going to have a constructor just for the sake of uh, uh, being able to send it through the network. I'm just creating a dummy class. It's it's a very simple class, custom number. It's just a wrapper for the double value, and now multi-threaded server. Both of, them, both of the client and the multi-threaded server uh, see this custom number class and when the server calculates this number it's not going to write, write double it's going uh, to send an object All right. so they're now sending like the, the objects so here we're going to say object input stream and here we're also going to have object input stream object output stream and on the right side we're also going to have object output stream the same is going to go for the client so let's copy object input stream here and here let's copy object output stream here and here now we're not going to say write double we're going to say uh, write object and here we're going to write an object which is new uh, custom number now okay we're sending an actual object it, it might be some other very different uh, class and then we're gonna say read object uh, let me actually uh, do it here uh, custom number result from the server equals this okay read object but read object it's throws the class not found exception let's actually uh, surround it with the try catch block and we're gonna say let's put it out like this let's declare it and then let's say uh, result equals here let's say it's just null and a read object returns an object we need to cast it into the custom number right so we're going to say custom number. So that's it. And then we reply from the server and we will reply it as result. So if uh, like the reading object is successful and like the casting is successful, we, we will be able to see the result. We need to implement the to string method. Public string to string. Return number okay but number is a double we need to say string dot value of number and in client we're just going to see that number so we're sending a number writing a number and reading a number here we need to read a number which is uh, let's say double num from client equals um, we're going to cast it 
custom number input stream dot read object and this throws uh, as you know the class not found exception uh, and we're gonna say read object cast it into a double oh sorry uh, cast it into a custom number and then do dot get number and store it in the num from client and after that we're gonna not write double but we're gonna say write object and we're gonna say new custom number and put num from client into that okay this is how we we're sending out, like the objects now through the network all right now um, let me copy this client into my folder and then run these programs all right so let's start our server we're gonna compile it first and then start it now we're gonna compile our client and run it so we have uh, this part working and this part is also working too uh, let's see two and you can see when we are sending these numbers as objects the server is receiving them as, as objects and repeating uh, replying by like sending the objects and we get it and unwrap it so instead of just sending this custom number you can send any any object which is realizable over the network we can send these objects over the network Alright, so this completes today's video lecture. It's very short and concise. I hope you guys enjoyed this video lecture and learned a little bit uh, something new. So today, to sum up, we wrote a very simple client and server uh, program when where we just sent one number and the server replies with the square of that number. And we made the multi-threaded version of it where we have a server and many many clients can connect to this server and this server just uh, works with each client in a separate thread okay thank you guys for your attention see you guys in the next one bye bye